Hello, welcome to Author Hour. I'm your host, Richard Linton, author of North Korea Deception and Hyde Park Deception. My guest today is Joel Gottfried, a retired software developer and active grandfather living with his wife, Susan, and his Italian water dog, Sophia, in Winmore, PA. At the age of 69, Joel discovered through a DNA test that the man who raised him was not, in fact, his biological father. This led him to an intense search to find out the circumstances of his birth and the identity of his father. Joel Gottfried's new book, Who's My Daddy?, chronicles that journey and explores the meaning of fatherhood as well as the classic question of nature versus nurture. Joel, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you, glad That's to be here. So I have to say to you, um, you know, when we started the show, this is now episode 12, this you are why we started this show because you are you know you'd never written before you had this great story to tell and you got up off your backside and you did it and you wrote this book so welcome tell us um who who you are and tell us how you came to write this book who's my daddy which is a non-fiction book yeah i as as you mentioned i'm a retired software engineer i spent 30 years developing advanced statistical software i'm a data guy okay that's what i was and not, not a writer, right. I, I wasn't a writer. But at age 69, my sister decided for my birthday to get me the uh, 23andMe DNA test. Okay. And this was, this was perfect because I was really into genealogy. I was really tracking my uh, father's family, as it turned out. And I was just wondering if I could learn more. And here's the key. She decided to get one for herself at the same time. Okay. Just because it would be fun to do it together. I looked at my results and they were interesting. I had some second cousins, whatever. Then her results came in and we sat down together and looked at them and we were stunned. It showed that we were half siblings, not full siblings. Wow. And to say that we, it made no sense at all. It was just utterly unexpected. And I, as a data guy, I look at data and I believe it. I didn't believe it. Okay. I just didn't make sense to me. And so I asked her who her father was, and she said, who's your daddy? <laughs> and she said, she looked like my father. I didn't. Wow. Our younger brother looked like my father. I didn't. And then the question was, was that really persuasive enough? Not really, because I needed more information. So we found our cousin, my father's brother's son. He took a DNA test, and it showed conclusively that he's the first cousin to my sister okay. and not related to me. Wow. Wow. So I was completely at a loss then because the life I had lived just was not what I thought it was. Okay. So so what so when you when you found that out did were you tempted to did you sort of redo the test or or you just got other people to do the test? That's a good question. The uh I, I wrote to 23andMe technical support and I argued with them, <laughs> although I, I knew it. full well there was nothing to argue about. Oh it, it was crystal clear. But then I signed up for three other com companies <gasps> and and in one of them, my sister did it as well, just okay. to be sure. Yep. And of course, it was it, that was the case. I mean, wow. th this is the not a data guy. Yeah, the not, data it's not guy. a mistake. Exactly. <laughs> it was. It, there was no way this was I a mistake. Yeah. I mean, for for this to be a mistake, they had to get half the DNA right and half of it wrong. Right. It, it right. Just, just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. So we 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 uh, we went to other places and uh, and then I decided I had to know the answer. I sure. had to find out what happened. Right. And who my father was, my biological father. So, so how long was it the the very first test to then doing all the other tests? How long did that bit take? Like, was it over months? About uh, to to do the other three tests, it was within a month. Oh, okay. So you were pretty hot on this. Oh, very much so. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was I was bound and determined to uh, to do this. And when I set my sights on something, I go for it. Okay. So then, uh, and are you are you are you at this stage? You're not thinking about a book about my story, right? No. no. No, no, I just wanted to find out who my biological father was. Okay, so then, so then, take us through that process. I mean, are you are you physically going to places? Are you just doing most of it online? How do you start that that uh, that search? Yeah, you're, you're, and obviously, your father is is no longer with us. Yeah, yeah. So you can uh, ask him. He, yeah, he wasn't around. My mom's not around. Uh, none of the relatives were around. Uh, and uh, so I I thought, well, the only way to really do this is through DNA testing. Right. And so I looked at the DNA tests and I found somebody who seemed to be a second cousin. And I found that uh, he wasn't related to my sister, which meant that he was on my father's side. Mm -hmm. So I contacted him, but no response. 
And then as the other company's tests came in, I contacted some other people, no response. And these, these were sort of distant relatives? Second cousins. I okay. decided, what I, what I realized, I didn't know much about DNA. I didn't know much about DNA testing. I didn't even know mu that much about relationships. Right. So I, so I had some research and I taught myself, I'm, I, I really like to get deep into things. Yeah. And so I bought several books on DNA testing and sequencing and, really? and to really understand the terminology and the ins and outs. And I got to the point where I felt very comfortable in understanding the technology. And so I decided that I was going to look for second cousins who were on my father's side. Th those cousins that you contacted, you never met them or contacted them before? I didn't know they existed. Okay. Yeah, okay. I didn't right. know they existed. And, and, and let me just interrupt you because I'm curious yeah. about the fact that you did all that research. Just, just tell, just before we move on at a pace, um, d is there anything you learned about DNA that is kind of really interesting or unusual that the average person, I mean, we all know it from watching, you know, crime shows, right? So is there anything you learned about yeah. DNA that oh, you could just share with us? Amazing things. 99.9% .9 of your DNA and my DNA are identical. Wow. Okay. Wow. The, the, the only thing that differentiates wow. you and me is this one tenth of a percent, oh. and it's measured in a certain way, and they they track how much of that, and only that is what we're looking at, is different between us, and 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 what I'm looking for is people who share that point one percent with me, mm. and uh, you would share, you know, if, uh, your parent would have about half of that with you, yeah. a, a sibling would have half. My sister and I had only 25%, mm -hmm. so showing we were half siblings. And a second cousin, yep. a, a first cousin is somebody who you share a set of grandparents with. Okay. A second cousin is somebody who you share one of the four sets of great grandparents with. Okay. If I could find a sibling, a half sibling or a first cousin, I would be golden, right. but I didn't expect that. Okay. So I said, all right, realistically, let me look for second cousins. And anything beyond that, it was gonna be too hard to track. Sure. And second cousins share about three and a half percent of your DNA. Uh, and so uh, there's one gentleman I found online. He and you know, I had four and a half percent of our DNA in common. So how did you find it? You just... I mean, oh, I, I, on the DNA tests, they, they show these are the people who are most closely related to you. And then you can figure out the relationship. Do they give email addresses? Uh, oh. Most of them have an internal messaging system. Oh, Some of them have email addresses. Yes. And then you, you contact them. And when I contacted them, Nobody replied. Right. And why, it wasn't crazy because maybe they didn't even do this recently. Maybe they weren't following it anymore. I don't know. So, so when you do these DNA tests, which is, I don't know why, I, I, kind of, I guess I, I, I should just say one of the things that, one of the reasons I found the story interesting was because I didn't know my dad until I was about 24 years old. Oh. Now, yours is like 10 times more interesting because, I mean, I mean, I knew who he was, but I didn't know him is my, my point. So it was, I wasn't, I was 24 before I actually met my dad and I discovered that I had five half sisters. So, so that was kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, but yours is even more interesting because you, you grew up with thinking this gentleman was your dad and he wasn't. So I interrupted the flow. So let me get back to, um, when you when you sign up for these DNA things, there's like a system where you you say if you want to be contacted or not, presumably. Yes, there are there are privacy settings. Okay. And you decide how much of, of what you have is is willing to, willing to make public and share. Right. And then uh, then anybody who shows up on my list was willing to share and right. and so uh, there I was. But I was getting very frustrated because I couldn't find anybody. And then something <laughs> really interesting happened. My daughter-in-law sent me a link to uh, the episode of uh, This American Life. Okay. Okay. And in it, she said, you got to listen to this. And it was a story about a man who grew up in a lower middle class Jewish family in the Bronx, just like I did. He was my exact same age. And he found out just about at the same point in his life that his father was not his biological father. Wow. And my jaw is dropping. I went, wow. what? This is incredible. And I'm listening to the story. And in the story... He was wondering if his mom's OBGYN might be his dad because she traveled from the Bronx all the way to this fancy doctor in Manhattan and turned out that wasn't the case. And mm -hmm. then he wrote a book about it and I read the book and he went through the whole story of how he did the DNA tracking and everything else. But it made me think, my mom went to a fancy OBGYN in Manhattan also from the Bronx. Wow. Maybe, maybe this person's my dad just as a hunch. And so what I did was, 
I took two paths to try to find this. One was the straightforward data approach that I was very comfortable with. Find relatives, build a family tree, and see if I could triangulate and figure right. out who my dad was. And the other one was just a hunch. Right. What if this OBGYN was my dad? And let's see if I can prove it or disprove it. So, so you, the hunch was simply because your mother went to this posh place and you just thought she probably couldn't afford to go there but she might have had some sort of relationship with this guy. Is that, is that why you're hunched? Well, uh, or that it was artificial insemination, oh, which is I more see. likely the case. I see. This was 1948. Okay. I didn't even know if artificial insemination existed. Right. Is, I, that, is that, by the way, is that, is that the receipt that you show in here? Um, the, uh, is that, so is, the, the, doctor, the doctor that I visited, I always delivered at a hospital called Doctor's Hospital, yeah. which was renowned in the day. They called it the Hotel Hospital. It was the Hospital of the Stars. Oh. Marilyn Monroe. What was it called? What was it called? Doctor's Hospital. Uh -huh. Michael Jackson. Ma Marilyn Monroe. Wow. These were all patients there. They almost lost their tax exempt status because they only catered to wealthy people oh and, and celebrities. What was my and you mom, were born there. I was born there. Oh what was goodness. my mom doing there? Well, it's because she had the fancy doctor who had admitting privileges there. But what was she doing with the fancy yeah. doctor? Let me let me just read. Let me sure. just read this because I this did. I love this. Um, there's a receipt that you put in the book, chapter eight, and I just got to read this out because it's so fun. March 29th, 1949. This is a receipt from the hospital, basically for your birth. Correct? Yes. So it says, you know, <laughs> room nine days at nine dollars eighty one dollars. Floor nurses twenty seven dollars. Nursery sixteen dollars. Delivery room and obs uh, anesthetic twenty five. Pharmacy five dollars two cents, and then less deposit one hundred. Less hospital insurance eighty. So t the refund you get a refund of twenty five ninety eight. I love that. I, I just had to read that out because it's so fun. But carry on. So so you're you're blown away that you are born in this posh hospital. Yes, and so I started to 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 wonder could this. Could this guy be? So when I wasn't getting responses to my DNA relatives' requests, I started investigating the doctor. Okay. And I found his picture in medical school, and then I pulled up my picture at the same no age, way. and I started showing it to everybody. And we had three groups of people who I say one was wow, mm -hmm. father and son, no doubt about it. Really. Some people said, yeah, there's a resemblance, but you can't be sure. And other people said, yeah, just two Jewish kids from the Bronx. Okay. Most of the people said they couldn't be sure, but some people were absolutely convinced. There's no question this guy is your dad. What did you think? I was the couldn't be sure category. Okay. okay. <laughs> Actually, I thought we looked alike, but it just didn't. It, it could, this, it, this was ridiculous yeah. that I would just take was a it, guess. Did you you and, could work out his height from the yearbook or anything. Do they have yeah, he was. He, he, here's the other thing. Growing up, I never thought twice that I was anybody other than the biological sure. offspring of my parents. Right. But I was taller than everybody in my family and my extended family as well. Mm. Now this doctor- How tall are you? 6'2". Okay. This doctor, my parents aren't, aren't unusually short, but, but I stood out. My, my dad nicknamed me Stretch, okay? <laughs> and, and so I, I, and the other thing was I, was, I was an academic whiz kid in school. Okay. I mean, I really was. Mm -hmm. And the doctor's family, as I wound up finding out, they all are. Oh. And nobody in my family was. Okay. And so, I, 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 so looking back on it, I kind of stood out in, in those two ways. But growing up, I didn't think twice about it. And so I went to uh, to see if I could find the, the doctor. The doctor, right? And I I panned all kinds of leads, but nothing nothing really panned out. And then I got a big breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I started looking for his name in one of the DNA sites. They have family trees in this oh. one. And I looked for any family tree that had his name in it. And there was one. And he was in it tangentially because he was married. He was the brother of somebody who was married to one of their members. And I contacted the guy who ran that family tree. And he put me in touch with uh, the doctor's niece who lives out in California. So what was his name? What was the doctor's name? Nathan Mintz. Nathan. And, and when you do that research, how do you, how do you know that it's the same Nathan Mintz that, that you're looking for? Uh, you don't know for sure, for sure. But if the, uh, in this case, it was pretty obvious it was 
because uh, he was a doctor. because I, I knew his birth date. Okay. And okay. I, and I okay. and therefore and from his birth date I could see uh, from the census records his brother and sister. Oh, and so clearly okay. th they were all in this family tree. So okay. this this happened to be the same person. Okay. But but your point is well taken. Doing all this research, you have to double check everything right. because you can easily be led astray. Right. Right. So I wound up talking to his niece. And she was Where does she live? In California. Okay. And she was fascinated with the idea that we might be first cousins. Ah. And I said, you know, this is just because I'm playing a hunch here. And she said, so okay. So you called her, you emailed her first? Uh, I, I, the, uh, the messenger thing. He, uh, the messenger, and then he emailed first, and then we talked on the phone. And uh, she was delightful. Mm -hmm. And she was as interested in figuring this out as I was. And when I said- so same age-ish? Same age she's about you? four or five years older than me. Okay. Yeah, about the same age. And she said she'd be delighted to take a DNA test. Oh, I see. Now, here's one of the, 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 the key clues. While we were talking, remember I said when I did the DNA test, the very I saw somebody who was my closest relative. His name was David Levine. Mm -hmm. Okay, never heard of him. When I'm talking to the niece, we're just ready to hang up, and she goes into her grandmother's family. And she said, oh, yeah, my grandmother's maiden name was Levine. I go, what? <laughs> You're kidding me. I almost fell out of my chair. Because the guy who was my closest relative from my father's side, I hadn't yet spoken with him, right, I hadn't made right. any contact, was also a Levine. Oh, my goodness. And so I said, oh, that's interesting. Now it made me think maybe I'm on the right track. Then one of the other DNA companies results come in. And the person who's at the top of my list in this one is Michael Levine. Okay. I go, oh, come on. Who is Michael Levine again? My second cousin. Oh, I see. Okay. So I have two second cousins, both named Levine, and the doctor's <laughs> mother's maiden name is Levine. Oh, my I said, this is looking kind oh, of promising here. I contact Michael Levine, actually his daughter, who was managing the, the genealogy in that family. Yeah. And they said, oh, we'd be happy to help. This is the first time somebody responded to me. Oh, my goodness. They'd be happy to help. And I spoke to them, and they were delightful, and they gave me all this information. Where were they, in New York? Uh, they're in Houston, actually. Okay. We're all over the place. Amazing. And uh, I said, okay, this is, this is great. And better yet, they had done a family tree of the Levine family. Oh, my goodness. So they give me the family tree. I'm looking at it, <coughs> and I just ruthlessly trimmed everything that wasn't related to me and I found my great-grandparents and their six children, one of whom was a grandparent of mine. And if I could find my grandparent, then I could find which, uh, then they had a male child who was my right, father. Right. As I investigated this further, I found out from through the, uh, I went to the Census Bureau and I found out that there were actually eight children, not six. And so I added them in, and now I had eight, and then I started eliminating them one by one. Oh my! Wait, you had eight children? Eight, eight. There, my, my, there were eight. My great grandparents had eight children, one of whom was my grand, a grandparent of mine. Okay. Okay. And now my, my, the way I was going to approach this was I was going to find descendants of each of these eight children, and see what my relationship with them was. If I'm a second cousin, it means that we don't share a grandparent, we share a great-grandparent, and therefore I could eliminate that person as my grandparent. And sure enough, Michael Levine's uh, grandfather couldn't be my grandfather, because otherwise we'd be first cousins, okay. but we were second cousins. Okay. So I put a big X through his part of the family okay. tree. And then they said, oh, you should talk to this woman named Dawn Bat. And I said, who's that? She's, well, she was adopted and she did genealogy work and she found out through all that that she's actually part of the Levine family as well. Mm -hmm. And she found, and she got help from Michael Levine. So I call up her. She's thrilled to help me out. And she tells me her <laughs> whole story and her grand, and, and, and we're second cousins once removed. She's a bit younger than me, but her mother is my second cousin. And therefore, uh, the, the, the mother's grandfather can't be my grandfather. And so I cross him out. Okay. So I'm now have eight, I'm down to six, okay. and I'm starting to eliminate them one by one. Uh, and then I finally get to talk to David Levine, uh -huh. the person I had been tracking down from the beginning. And he was delightful and he was so welcoming. And, he, and it was such a nice conversation. And I said, well, who's your grandfather? And he tells me who he is and I said, okay, so I cross him off. Okay. And then we're ready to hang up and I asked him, by the way, do you know Nathan Mintz? Uh-huh. And he says, well, sure. What do you mean, sure? 
my father is his first cousin. Oh my goodness. And I said, oh. oh. <laughs> so wait a minute. If his father is Nathan Mintz's first cousin, yep. that means that David and I would be second cousins. Right. And we, the DNA says we are second cousins. Oh my goodness. This doesn't prove that he's my father, but him being my father is no longer a hunch. Yep. It's now consistent with the data. Oh. And so my two paths, yep. following the data yep. and playing the hunch, have now merged into one. And then, uh, two weeks later, the niece's DNA results come back. Right. She's in California. And she said, oh, I'm busy all day, but I can call you in the early evening. But it's California, so it's late evening for us. She calls me and she gets does the sharing settings, and we both log in to 23andMe and look at it, and there it was. We are first cousins. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Now, if she's my first cousin, it means that this man is my father. There's uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. Wow. And I had been, this was three months to the day after the original test. Uh-huh. And I'm going, all of a sudden, this thing that was an obsession of mine. Yep. I just felt almost numb. I go, oh, wow. That's we it. talked a little while longer, promised to stay in touch. And then dazedly, I walked into the bedroom. My wife was in bed and almost asleep. It was pretty late at night yep. by, by, for us by now. And I said to her, well, it's, de it's determined. Nathan Mintz is my father. <laughs> and just right before she falls asleep, she said, well, then you have him to thank for your intelligence. <laughs> and she goes to sleep. And I'm sitting there for hours in the corner of our bedroom. Who am I? Mm -hmm. If my parents had had a baby boy named Joel, mm -hmm. born at the exact same moment as I was, but yeah. who was conceived the normal way, it yeah. wouldn't be me. Right. It'd right. be somebody else. Yeah. Who am I? Uh -huh. And I couldn't, I mean, I just couldn't make sense of it. it. All of a sudden, it was like a flood coming over me. Who are, who's my family? Who, yeah. about the, who are these people that I've just met? Yeah. How about the people I've lived with my whole life? Where do I fit into all this? It just was... And you just you, so you so you were just sitting there for hours, like going through this. Yeah, right. So so let me let me. Uh, it's a fascinating story, Joe. But I do I I, I want to just take you back to how you you wrote the book. Okay? Yeah. So 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 you had this incredible experience, and uh, tell us about how you came to write the book. Did people say oh, you got to write a book? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah. Every, I want everybody said to could, see how every, how it happens. Everybody process. said you got to write a book. You got to write okay. a book. And I said well. I'm not a writer. Yeah. Okay. I'm a data guy. I'm yep. not a writer. Yeah. And then I said, you know what? I do want to tell the story. Yeah. Even if I never publish the book or anything, yep. just to, to, to write it all down. So I sat down and in six weeks I had eight, I made an outline and yep. in six weeks I had 80% of the book done. Okay. So, so, so again, writing process, cause that's one of the things we like to touch on. So you, did you write like chapters first? I created an outline with the chapters. Okay. And basically chronological order of your investigation, presumably. Kind of. Uh, uh, largely, it is. The bulk of the book is how I figured this out. Okay. But in the beginning, I introduce my my father. Yeah. The man who raised me, okay. George Gottfried, is my father. Sure. He, I, his sperm did not create me, but he's my father. Yeah. I put a whole chapter into my relationship with him, okay. which was just completely... Beautiful. F f formed. I am who I am because of this man. Right, right. And, uh, and I am who I am because of the sperm of Nathan Mintz as well. Right. So I'm... I have two fathers, yeah. and uh, so I, I told this, his story. Uh, also, at this time, I was dealing with uh, multiple myeloma, which was a form of blood cancer. Oh boy! And I was in the hospital when I did most of the research. Oh. And I mean, oh my goodness! So I no. weave that into Everything the story. Okay? Everything okay? Everything's now? perfectly okay. fine now. Right. So, uh, wow. so, so on and on. And then at the end of the book, I just speculate on. Uh, what might have happened, and I do some more research into so, who my father so, is. And so you're on your computer, you're in the hospital, you're writing, writing, writing. Uh, in the hospital, I was investigating. I hadn't investigating. yet figured it out. Okay. Only when I came home. Okay. You're writing on a computer or handwritten? Yeah, absolutely on a computer. So on a computer. Okay. So so how many pages, how many words did you get to your manuscript? How many, you know, when you finished? That's, a, that's, that's funny. I looked up, I said, how how long should I should, 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 should a right. memoir be? Yes, and I and the recommendation was that if you're not known, a personal memoir should be about sixty five thousand words. Okay. Anything more, and people are going to say, oh, why should I bother? Anything less, and they say, well, why should I bother? Great. I was done telling the story. I had about thirty five thousand. Oh, and I said, oh, that's an interesting admission. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. So, what yeah. did you do, what did you do then? Uh, I said, 
I don't have anything more to say. Okay. And I said, and that's my book. Oh, so you, so you, so you did cut it. So you, okay. So uh, you didn't try and like embellish, because I feel like there's quite. I mean, I was looking through and reading, and there's like pictures, and there's di you know, I like the diagrams and the old photographs. Um, but you, I mean, because it doesn't seem like a small book. I mean, it seems like a. I mean, I guess you could say it's a little bit on the thin side, but anyway, it's interesting that you decided that. Um, so, so you have the book now. What about then? What do you do? Like, because you know, it's one okay. thing to have the document. Well, the, the, the uh, document. Yeah, I, I, I was not convinced that this is something that other, other people, other than my close friends and family, would be interested in reading. Yeah. Yep. And so, I have a friend who's a really good editor. Okay. And I gave it to her, and I said, "Here, you take a look at this." Professional editor, or just no? She had a, been a colleague a of mine, but she was well known in okay. our company for okay. for producing. Producing great written documents, oh, okay, great, and, uh, and 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 editing other people's. So I gave it to her, and she marked the thing up from top to bottom. She did, and uh, and when I was done with her changes, it was thirty-eight thousand words. So wait, <laughs> okay. what, what was it? It was thirty-five. Thirty-five, and it went up to thirty-eight. Oh, so 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 did she write little bits and pieces in? No, for you? but she told me. She said, look. Just this chapter over here, you have to tell more about yourself, mm -hmm. not just the search, okay. and 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 things of that what nature. Your feeling? Did she say things like that? Yes, yeah. yes. So, so the the book is a much better distillation of who I am. Yeah. To yeah. accompany the nuts and bolts of how I figured it out. Yeah. Which which was which I had thought I had done a really good. So job of. editor, and then and now. So what draft are we on? Once she once she's given you once you've done her corrections, is this like the second or third draft? Uh, Would you say? Yeah, I didn't really count them up that way. But after 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 her change, after the changes that she recommended, then it just was tiny little things, just proofreading at that okay. point. Did you get a professional proofreader? No, not even. No. Okay. Did you? I guess you just did a spell check, pretty much, right? Well, a, grammar a grammar check. check. Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. and then she was she's a grammarian as well. So okay. She, All right. So. so the next stage, and again, this is for people who. Like I said at the beginning, this is for people who you know want to do this and have a story to tell. Next stage, like I mean, because I've spent more than a year, you know, ten <clears> hours a day figuring out how to publish a book, right? So, so what? How did? What did you discover next, and how to do? What was the next? Yeah, step? the uh, I, I had a friend who's published several books, and he gave it to a professional editor uh, to look okay. at, and he came back and said, "I like the story, but it's not commercial." Okay. It just uh, so you thought you might traditionally publish. Maybe. Traditionally publish. Okay. He said, a, a, "A traditional publisher is really not going to be interested because it's just not. You'd have to really go into way more about DNA testing and the, the and doctors being fathers and all the societal Either impact. That, or you got to be famous, right? Or you so, one or the other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, and I and I didn't have that in me, and, it, and really I had no no, yeah, no right. interest in doing that. And so I looked into self publishing, and I found out that uh, it's very easy these days. <laughs> I mean, uh, Amazon, you can uh, create your book and they'll, they print these books on demand. You ask for the book, they'll print it and send it to you. Yeah. And so there's no... So you got Kindle version? I got a Kindle paperback. version. Paperback. And then I decided I was going to create an audio book. Fantastic. So I bought myself a good microphone and I turned my office at home into a mini uh, sound studio. Yep. I, I learned enough about sound engineering to do this Amazing. and it's now out on audible.com as well. I was going to ask you, did you do it? And you did. I did. But, but did, did you, just real quick on the audio book, what I, astonishes me, because I've narrated both my books, um, you you know the narration say takes to do a chapter takes thirty minutes, but then it literally takes me four or five times as long to edit out all the little bits and pieces. The breath sounds in between. Did you have that problem as well? The technical uh, stuff. The, I, I did that as I went, uh, okay. and I could I could tell right away that uh, I had the extra breaths and the ums and the errs and whatever. And so, uh, what, I, what software did you use? Uh, it's called Audacity. Yes, you did. Okay. I did. So it was Audacity. Amazing. Exactly. Yeah, so if you if you're doing if anyone wants to do an audio book, um, Audacity is is a great piece of software. And um, audio uh, Derek Dupker, Derek Dupker, D O E P K E R. Google him if you want to do an audio book. Google his course. It's like two hundred <coughs> bucks. I I did this guy's course. I mean, it's it's a it's a module thing. So just a real quick, if you do want to do an audio book, uh, Audacity is a software to use, and Derek Dupker. Uh, his course is great. It's two hundred bucks, and he teaches you how to do this stuff. But you obviously didn't even need Derek. <laughs> I, I, but I, I, uh, Audible themselves has, has some free co courses, and I and I and I, and I, oh, and I did that. Yeah, ACX, right? ACX, yeah. So ACX.com, uh, folks, is 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 literally a sort of separate wing of Audible, 
and it's for people who want to narrate their own books. And as Joel said, they do do these kind of, they call it ACX University, I think. Exactly. And they do all these courses. So again, that's a great resource if you if you want to do that. Yeah. And um, so I was very happy with the way What about the out. cover? What about the cover? How did you choose that? That's a great story. My son, uh, has an artistic background. Okay. And as soon as I told him I was thinking of the book, he said, Dad, I'll design and, and then produce the cover for you. Love it. And, uh, and it, he did a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And um, the, the name again, it was your, your sister literally said that to you, right? She, did, uh, I said to her, her, I said, who's your daddy? Yeah. And she said, who's your daddy? Okay, that's right. And, uh, you know, that's the common phrase, like, who's your daddy? Yeah. And I figured, who's my daddy? Yeah. Would be the, the perfect title for the book. That's so fantastic. Yeah. That's so fantastic. Um, so, um, what, and, and what does it feel like? Like, uh, what is it, just to, just to wrap it up, um, you know, what, would you would you or would you not recommend doing something like this, some this kind of adventure? Oh my goodness. Everybody asks me, wouldn't you have been happier not to have known? Mm-hmm. Because it upended upends your life. And uh no, I, I'm the kind of guy who wants to know everything. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. the more I know, the better I feel. And I'm very glad I did this for a couple of reasons. One, I just like to know everything. And so understanding where I come from is the information is empowering. Mm-hmm. But also in the process I've become much more introspective and now much more satisfied with who I am. Because, you know, I said I sat there that night not knowing how I fit in, Mm -hmm. but now I I fit in. I, I'm who I am, and I can't, can't be anybody else, and it just feels right to me. And, and it, seems, it seems like it's almost a celebration of who you are. It without, is. Without being egotistical about it. It seems like just, just going through that process is literally almost like a rebirth. In, in, a way, or, or, in, a way, in a way, it is, yeah. And, and, I, and so now I have this wonderful new family. I have five or Amazing. six second cousins, two first cousins. Have you been able to meet them yet? I've met the, the, the niece, the niece uh, who, who helped me out. I yep. met her at, when I was out in California, and we had a gloriously fun day together, and we're on the phone all the time. And, wow. And now, the, the, one of the, my, my great joys is the people in this family have now been talking to each other, right. and they didn't know each other existed Amazing. until I came along and connected them, and I didn't know anything about the family at all. Joel, so it's been really wonderful. You were a great guest. You're Thank a great you. speaker. I, I wish you many more podcasts and radio shows. Here's Joel's book, um, author of Who's My Daddy, Joel Gottfried. And uh, my new book is also out, The Hyde Park Deception, just came out this month. Um, and we hope that you will enjoy all of these books. And see you next time.